As Audrina just referenced, there are a lot of questions here. What's next? How long? What happened? Who pays? Who's in trouble? Uh, we're talking to a man who was once in charge and charged with finding those answers and solutions to infrastructure disasters. Joining us now is former longtime Republican congressman and then Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood. Uh, former Secretary, thank you for joining us. Hey, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, was there a comparable infrastructure disaster in your tenure, one that gives us a blueprint to this? And, and you know, if so or if not, how would you prioritize the investigation here? It kind of seems like two pronged, right? Like you got to find out the why, but you got to get that port back open. Um, the difficulty with your job you once had. Can you kind of take us into that? Well, uh, during our time, we had a Colgan air crash, a plane crashed with four, where 49 people perished in Buffalo, New York. Now, that's not not anywhere near uh, the kind of uh, um, destruction that took place uh, in the Baltimore Harbor. We also dealt with pipeline explosions in communities. Uh, this is the worst, though. I think this uh, will go down uh, in the history of DOT as one of the worst disasters uh, in the history of the department. Uh, and. Uh, there's probably four big things that, that need to happen. Number one, they need to find the victims. Uh, there's still four people uh, that are submerged underwater. Their families are waiting uh, for them to be found. Number two, getting the harbor open. I know that they've got a temporary channel open, but that is nowhere near what they need to get these huge, huge cargo ships in and out of Baltimore, which is one of the largest ports in the world and delivers goods not only into our country but out of our country one of the great exporting ports of uh, automobiles obviously uh, removing the debris will take uh, a good long period of time and rebuilding the bridge will take years and the cost is going to be enormous billions of dollars uh, for the recovery of the victims for opening the channel for removing the debris, all of these collectively, plus building a new bridge, will cost uh, uh, a lot of money. I, I would say billions of dollars and could take up to five years to get that bridge open, wow. probably a year or less to get the port open. But uh, wow. they're, they're, they're working very hard on it. Uh, that answered many of my questions there. Uh, fascinating insight, uh, Mr. Secretary. So let's now shift to politics. Of course, you are a Republican in a Democrat's cabinet under President Obama. Uh, we're not seeing that at all right now. Bipartisanship seems to be screamed out by the right and the left, the, the far side of each party. Uh, your thoughts on the current climate of things? Well, look, at the, the parties are, are, are both in their corners. The Democratic Party is uh, turned into a very, very progressive party, uh, and the Republican Party has turned into a very, very conservative party. And uh, there's, there's little room for uh, people in the middle, and they get drowned out by the loud, loud voices of the extremes in each of the parties. And uh, really, uh, to, to get the money that is needed to, to rebuild the harbor, to open the channel, to rebuild the bridge, it's going to take bipartisan cooperation right. uh, to settle uh, the idea that we need to continue to fund Ukraine. It's going to take bipartisan cooperation. There are several big issues mm -hmm. dealing uh, in, in dealing w in Washington uh, that need bipartisan consideration, and that's what we need to get back to in our country to solve our big problems. Obviously, immigration is a big issue. Streams of people pouring over the borders. And uh, some of these will get played out in the campaign. Some need to get played out immediately. Uh, certainly the Baltimore Harbor issues need to get played out immediately. Ukraine needs to be dealt with. Uh, and uh, it's going to take bipartisan cooperation. It's going to take people coming out of their corners, coming into the middle, and uh, believing that compromise is not a bad word. It's the way that uh, for 250 years in our country, we've been able to get a lot of big things done. 
Yeah, never thought of that. Uh, this could become a political football. Um, funding the repair of the bridge and the cleanup. Uh, fascinating. I think that's where we are. You know, there's an impassioned right and left, like you said. Many Americans are kind of holding their nose when they think about voting for President November. Legitimate questions about physical and mental wellness of both nominees. Who are you voting for? Uh, well, I'm supporting President Biden. I, I worked with uh, then Vice President Biden during the Obama administration. He and I became friends. We worked a lot on transportation issues. I'm very proud that President Biden passed the largest transportation bill, a trillion dollar yeah. bill, a historic bill, passed the Congress in a bipartisan fashion. 17 Republicans voted for it in the Senate and seven House members voted for it, Republican House members in the House. and. Uh, and so I like the way that President Biden has tried to reach across the aisle, solve big problems. And uh, I, I believe he earns, uh, he, he earns the support of the American people for his ability to really uh, get things done and do it in a bipartisan way. Okay. That coming from a uh, former longtime Republican congressman and then Secretary of Transportation. Uh, we really appreciate your insight this morning, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. LaHood. Thank you very much for inviting me. And we'll be right back.